My name is Jim Ford, and I'm a technology teacher from Stanford, Connecticut. And I'm very excited about teaching coding to kids. And I'm a big proponent of the hashtag CS for All movement. Um, I get the opportunity to expose at least 200 students a year uh, on the sixth grade level to some introductory Scratch education. Scratch being the coding language developed by MIT's lifelong kindergarten group um, to ha be a free um, coding language um, th that kids can embrace and learn computational thinking skills through. So um, in my commitment to doing this with kids over the years, I've had some fascinating experiences. Some of my students have gone on to be coders. But I think what's most important is just develop developing their ability to think. Um, and what's even more exciting is being able to do it for all students. That's the key thing. The key thing is taking every student, every person in my classroom from every background, from every neighborhood in Stanford, and assuring that they've had an experience with coding. We don't know where our next coding genius is going to come from. We don't know where our next great leaders are going to come from. But all of them should be exposed to this opportunity to develop their ability to think and their ability to see themselves in this role as a technologist. Um, one thing that came out of that experience for me so far is um, a colleague of mine, Carrie Chiapetta, nominated me to go to a um, White House Champions for Change program, which occurred in 2015 in December. Um, I was invited to go to the White House and meet with a group of people from around the country about this issue of CS for kids, but, all, but in particular, how can we make sure that the diverse student bodies that we have are being exposed to this um, important learning? Um, the day that we were supposed to go, it turns out, it was December 2015. If you don't remember, that was one of the worst snowstorms that ever hit Washington, D.C., and the federal government was shut down, including the White House. So I was very disappointed, but I found out they were still willing to meet with us. So because my family wanted to come down for the journey, we jumped into our Highlander, drove down to Washington, D.C., through the deep snow, which, by the way, Washington, D.C. does not do a good job of removing because they're not used to having deep snow. And we trudged our way over to the White House on that morning, and we still met as a team. What was interesting to me, though, was that because the federal government was shut down, um, they couldn't do all the things that they did with other champions for change. Uh, for example, the um, cafeteria was closed. So here we were having pizza with Valerie Jarrett and her team in one of the rooms in the um, Eisenhower office building, probably the ugliest building in the world, um, having pizza. Everyone was in jeans. We were all kicked back, chilling, talking to one another. Um, and then we had our formal meeting in a much more formal space in that building. But everyone was very relaxed. And it was very odd, people in L.L. Bean boots talking about how we can best serve the kids of America through, and, and the adults through a CS for all philosophy. This led to some legislation which came out shortly afterwards, which funded it very well through the Obama administration. Um, one interesting story that, that um, I'd like to share just personally is we got to go sit um, in the um, Roosevelt Room, which is right outside the Oval Office. And I would like to say I was focused on our topic, but the entire time I was staring at a door which led to the Oval Office and was waiting for it to open the entire time. <laughs> well, as it turns out, it didn't, because on that day, Barack was meeting with Bernie Sanders, and they were having a very important meeting, um, because in December 2015, as you can imagine, it was a very important moment politically. But it was the experience of a lifetime that was brought to me through working with kids in computing. Um, afterwards, um, upon reflecting on all of these experiences, I did get the chance to try and create a character named Mike Campbell through the writing of a book called Scratch Club. And I tried to embody um, what I was feeling about education and computing and best practices in this book called Scratch Club with the hopes that maybe I could transmit some of it through an interesting work of fiction. And so I'm hoping that if you have an interest in that, you might look that up sometime. But I guess the bottom line is coding is important for kids, all kids, um, because I think it's going to improve their ability to think, but it's also going to change the way they think about themselves.